it's Jade here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're not making any new clothes because we're going to talk about sewing tune and sewing tip. I decided to make this video because a lot of you have asked me since I started my YouTube channel. But at that time, I was like so nervous and not too confident to speak in front of the camera. Not only because of my bad English and strong accent, but also I didn't think I'm good enough to talk about it. But because of you and thanks to you who always support me here, I have enough courage to speak in front of the camera, even though my English is still not improving that much and I'm still learning sewing by my way. So again, thank you so so much for your support and contributing on this channel. I hope we will keep learning and growing together. And one last thing before we jump into today's video is everything I'm going to share in this video is from my experience in sewing as a non-professional sewer. I'm not a tailor and I learned sewing by myself. So you might find it right or wrong or you already know about it. But I think it would be a good reference for anyone who knew at sewing or just started your sewing journey. So let's get started. When we talk about sewing tunes, the third and the most important tunes is sewing machine. I got a lot of questions about my sewing machine and where I got it. So here is it. It's called Merit Joyful Sewing and it's a second hand one. I bought it 5 years ago and it cost me around $70. At that time, I didn't know anything about sewing machine like which brand is good or which one is suitable for a beginner like me. But luckily, the guy who sold me this sewing machine suggested this one and up to now, I'm still so happy with it. It's have all the basic things I need for sewing. I also have trying to try other sewing machines that are pretty common now, but I'm still refer to you this one. So if you ask me which sewing machine is good to buy, in my opinion, you should try to find a metal sewing machine. It means the sewing machine have metal at all the important parts of the machine. It's heavier than the popular sewing machine, but it's stronger and will last longer. And besides that, don't try to get a sewing machine with too many features. It will be either too difficult to you or confuse you. To me, you just need to have some basic options of stitching like zigzag stitching, left and right stitching, or buttonhole stitching. Believe me, you want you one of them. Second tune is the breast of foot. You need to use the different breast of foot for the different stitching. And I have five breast of foot that I always use and I think it's necessary for you. The first one is the straight breast of foot. It's used for the straight stitching and it's very easy to use. The second one is um, the zigzag breast of foot. It's used for the zigzag stitching or left and right stitching. The third one is the overlock breast of foot. It's used for fact overlocking and it's very helpful when you don't have a surgery or overlock machine. I use it all the time in my DIYs. The fourth one is the zipper breast of foot. It's used to install the zipper and I have to say that it's very helpful. It makes your zipper look really nice. The fifth one and also the last one is the buttonhole breast of foot. I used to hand sew when it came to buttonhole before, but it takes so long to finish and it doesn't look really nice. This breast of foot is a lifesaver. You just need to put the button on the back of the breast of foot and it will auto create the buttonhole that will fit your button. Her sewing tools is the needle. I think some of you used to use one needle for all DIY you made before. I did the same, but after breaking so many needles, I learned. So before making any clothes, I will check the fabric to see what types of needle will be good on it. And in my opinion, you need to have at least three types of needles. The average needle for most of the fabric, the smaller needle for thin fabric like seafoam, and the bigger needle for thick fabric like jeans. 
Besides that, you might need hand needles for the part that you couldn't use the sewing machine, like installing the button. The next sewing tool is thread. I use two toys of thread. The thin cotton thread for most of my DIY and the bigger thread for jeans DIY. I only use the small uh, thread size because it fits my sewing machine and I don't sew every day like a tailor to need a big size. So this size is just perfect for me. The fixed sewing tool is seam ripper. It's used to unsew the curtain seam of the clothes. I didn't know it when I first started sewing. So I use a razor blade and it's quite dangerous if you're not a careful person. It's either gonna cut the fabric or hurt your finger. And the seam ripper will solve all of those problems. The next one is thread clipper. It's used to cut the thread after sewing. I know you can use the scissors to do it, but it's faster with the clipper. The next one is sewing tape or measuring tape. It's used to measure your body and measure the size of the patterns you want to make. I also use it at my ruler because it's long and very flexible. I use the one that has the number in centimeters and inch at two sides. So maybe next time I will check the measurement in inch for you. Even though I usually use the sewing tape as my ruler, I still use the ruler sometimes. And two types of ruler you need are straight and curved rulers. And if you plan to buy them, I suggest you to buy a see-through rulers because it's hard to see the fabric when you draw and you can know if you put it straight or at the right position or not. The next sewing tool needs scissors. I know any scissors still can cut the fabric, but the sewing scissors will make your cutting smoother and nicer. And I use the scissors with the plastic at the handle part, so it's not too heavy for my hand. The next tool is the pins. It's used to hold the fabrics together or fix the foldings. This thing is pretty small and you will need to use a lot when sewing. So you better get a pin holder like me or other holder to easily get them when you need to put in or out. It's also hard to avoid losing or searching everywhere when you need to use it. Besides that, I also keep a few safety pin and head clip to help me in upsiding the fabric or putting the elastic to the fabric hole. The last sewing tool or chart or sewing pen is used to draw the lines on the fabric when making the pattern. And if you watch my video, you will see that I always use charts because it's worked for all types of fabric while sewing pen do not. And they are on the basic sewing tools I think that you should have if you are a beginner or you just started your sewing journeys. I know I still have a lot of other sewing tools but they are enough for me and until now they are on the tools I use in my DIYs. Moving to the sewing tip, I think you probably knew or watched a lot of sewing tip before. So I just share a few small sewing tips that I found pretty useful for me. The first tip is always put your thread under the presser foot. By doing it, the end of the thread won't be stuck in your seam when sewing. The second tip is the way to have a straight seam. Instead of looking at the needle or the seam, I look at the edge of the presser foot to make sure it's in the same line with my fabric. Next tip is the way to put the under thread. I turn the end of the thread to the left side of the bobbin first, then I put the popping into the popping case after that, so the thread will run smoothly. Next tip is the way to avoid the tangle. When putting the upper thread, make sure you don't make this part. This one is usually hidden in most sewing machines now, so you might miss it and didn't know. But when you sew and your thread is tangled, it could be a reason. Next tip is changing the needle for the different fabric. As I said in the sewing tool part, it's better to change the needle to suit with your fabric. It might be not a big problem if your fabric is thinner than your needle but your needle might be broken if the fabric is too thick. The last step is sewing backward a bit at the beginning and at the end of the seam. It has to permanent the seam and the threads won't be loose. And there are some of my little sewing tips for today's video. I hope you got some useful information. I'm still learning in my sewing journey, so I'm happy to know more about sewing tune and sewing tips from your opinions. 
let me know in the comments and if you're new here please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so we can see each other next week see ya